Is your child experiencing a repetitive back pain and you are not sure why your child is just getting this back pain and this back pain is just not resolving then you should know what are the conditions that can give your child back pain and what you can do about it. In this video I am going to share all this information with you guys. So make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's begin. Friends, nowadays back pain is not just a condition that impacts elderly. Adolescent and even kids are prone to develop back pain thanks to our lifestyle. But it's not just our lifestyle. There are certain disorders and conditions that can give symptoms of back pain in children. These disorders, when identified early and acted upon it early, can be managed very effectively. But if it is ignored, then this can turn into serious disorders or conditions. That's why if your child is suffering from low back pain, which is more than seven days old, please don't ignore it. See a doctor immediately. So now let's understand what are this condition. The first condition that comes in the list of back pain cause is a condition called as spondylolysis. What do I mean by that? In spondylolysis, there is fracture or you can say breakage of a bone in your spine. In this condition, there is breakage of the bone in the spine of the child. This fracture of bone majorly happens in children who are involved in athletic activities which involves a lot of hyperextension of back. For example, gymnastics, swimming, football, etc. If your child is involving any of these activities in an extreme levels, he or she can get this fracture and this can lead to repeated low back pain which should not be ignored at all. The solution to this problem is diagnosis itself. So if your child is involved with this kind of activities, complaining of pain which is more than three or four days, intense in nature that make sure to see your doctor as soon as possible. Orthopedician will advise for an x-ray, CT scan or MRI scan to rule out the diagnosis and based on which the treatment would be done. Majorly, the treatment for spondylolysis condition is back rest or back support followed by activities or physiotherapy for the other limbs which are not immobilized. Gradually progressing, child is trained to move the spine muscles followed by strengthening of the paraspinal muscle in order to ensure that the child is able to go back to their regular activities. That takes me to the next condition that can give low back pain to your child and that is the postural deformities. There is something called as upper cross syndrome as well as lower cross syndrome. You must have seen children these days have to carry heavy backpacks. But that's not all. Children these days also spend a lot of time on cell phones and laptops. This brings some permanent changes in their postural alignment in the form of lumbar lordosis at the same time thoracic kyphosis. What do I mean by that? In simple words, this is hunchback and the lower back curvature of the spine also increases. This eventually puts a lot of strain on certain group of muscles. At the same time, the opposing group of muscles become weak, eventually leading to this condition which is called as upper cross syndrome and lower cross syndrome. Upper cross syndrome majorly happens around your neck and the upper back region where your back neck muscles become tight and the front chest muscles become tight. At the same time, the front neck muscles become weak and the upper back muscles become weak. This crossing phenomena leads to hunched back posture, eventually leading to a lot of strain falling on the back and giving the low back pain to the child. Similarly, in the lower cross syndrome, the abdominal muscles become weak, the paraspinal muscles of the back become weak, at the same time the hip muscles become tight. At the same time, the muscles at the thoracolumbar region which means the end of your upper back and the, end, the beginning of the lower back. That's where the tightness develops which eventually leads to the hyperextension or you can say hyperlordosis which gives low back pain symptoms. The treatment to this problem lies in posture correction. And to do that, the first thing that you need to do is posture analysis. So if you feel that your child's posture is not correct, please take him to physiotherapist. Physiotherapist would be in the position to do a posture analysis for your child, will recommend what is the right posture correction practices at the same time exercises that will help your child to overcome these postural deformities. 
that takes me to the third condition or disorder that can give low back pain to your child and that is called as sacroiliac dysfunction. Children are involved in very high intensity activities when they play. This puts a lot of injury and inflammation risk on the sacroiliac joint. This is a joint which is formed by involvement of your sacrum or else your tailbone and the pelvic bone. The crust at which these two bones join, we have many structures around it. These structures get irritated, inflamed and that gives sacroiliac joint dysfunction. As an outcome, your child will experience pain majorly on one side of your lower back which will aggravate while sitting cross-legged or else when the child is trying to extend the leg as if he or she has to sit on a cycle. This pain also when doesn't cure or is ignored leads to sciatica symptoms in future. That's why it should not be avoided at all. The solution to the problem lies again in removing the inflammatory factors by avoiding the movements that are triggering the irritation or else inflammation on your SOI joint. You might need to give a coccyx pillow to your child while sitting that offloads a lot of pressure that's falling on the SI joint. At the same time, physical therapy will help in reducing the pain with the help of electrotherapy modalities and moist therapy. That's not all. The rehabilitation is only complete when the child undergoes an, a thorough exercise regime or protocol that aims at mobility, flexibility and strengthening of the pelvic muscles at the same time back muscles. This condition has a lot of repercussions in future and that's why this should not be ignored at all. That takes me to the fourth condition that can give symptom of low back pain in your child and that is a muscle strain. This is one of the most common condition that your child can experience. When your child is indulged in play or else is sitting in a one position for a very long period of time, certain group of muscles are prone to go through strain. This strain and spasms can give low back pain repeatedly. The spasms and strain can be avoided and can be reduced by again adopting right postural habits, taking care of diet, if the diet is full or rich in proteins and essential vitamins, the child will be having that strength to withhold these strains that are falling on the muscles and the pain will be less. At the same time, regular exercises or physical activity are the key in order to prevent muscle sprains and spasms that are very common in children these days. Last condition that can cause low back pain to your child is growth pain. Yes, you heard me right. As your child attains puberty, there will be irritation in the growth plate. At the same time, sometimes when the child's bone is getting stronger or longer, the muscles also have to cope up or lengthen themselves in order to match those length. Sometimes that insufficiency leads to pain and also leads to irritability to the growth plates, which gives repeated pain in the form of low back pain. But the common problem with this condition is this pain is not only limited to low back area. This pain can be present in leg, can be present in shoulder and even in neck. That's why diagnosis is the key. So if your child is suffering from repeated low back pain or recurrent pain in different joints, please take your child to your doctor. Make sure that the right diagnosis is made. Again, if even it is a growth plate related pain, adequate nutrition and right kind of physical activity and postural practices is the key in order to bring this pain under control. So friends, these were the most important condition and common disorders or problems that can give low back pain in your child. Make sure don't ignore any of the signs because your child's health is your child's future. For more videos like this, I would recommend you to please subscribe to our channel and comment in the comment section if you have any of the further questions or requests related to videos. We would love to hear them and create videos around it. On that note, I'll end this video here and I'll see you in another video. Thank you.